Hi, this is Ying Dong Lu from IBM Research. Today I will present optimal control in fluid model of input cube switches. This is joint work with Mark Scolanti and Tong Hong Sok. Input cube switches are a fundamental mathematical model in computer and uh, communication networks. They provide a concrete model for transmitting packets between multiple input and output ports. Here we see a simple illustration of a three by three switches. That's three input ports and three output ports, totally uh, nine queues. At each time slot, only one queue for each input port and one for each output port can be simultaneously transmitted, just like the one illustrated in red. In general, there can be n input ports and n output ports. So there are n squared queues, one for each pair of input and output ports. Simultaneous transmission must obey the following two rules. First, every input port can transmit at most one packet. Two, every output port can receive at most one packet. The subsets of the queues that satisfy these two constraints are called basic schedules. And the performance of the switch is controlled by choosing a basic schedule at each time slot. Q switches has received considerable attention in research literature. We only list a really small sample here. But most of previous work has been focused on throughput optimality of max weight. Some of the recent work has focused on delay optimality, though limited to asymptotic heavy traffic regime. Recently, we derived optimal policies for two by two stochastic systems and the general linear cost functions, revealing different structures, CMU and switching curves. But these results generalize to n by n switches only in very special cases. This motivated us to investigate optimal control problem for in the fluid regime, where some of the previous work is also listed here. So here's an overview of the talk. First, uh, we will define the stochastic model of the switches, then define what we mean by the fluid model and the formulation of the optimal control uh, problem. Next, we'll present the optimal control algorithm and our main theoretical findings, including brief description of main arguments in the proofs. Computational experiments will further support our results. Given the equivalence up to constant factors between delay and the Q-length, as a result of the Little's law, we'll focus on Q-length in the remainder of the talk, although uh, the result also applies to delays. Let's start with some basic notations. Input ports are generally indexed by I and output ports by J. Time is slotted and indexed by T. In each time slot, the scheduling policy select a basic schedule, where a packet from a non-empty queue in the schedule is served. The set I provide a polytope description of all the basic schedules, and it will play a instrumental role in our analysis. At each time t, the basic system vector qij is the number of packets waiting to be transferred, transmitted from i to t, i to j. The cumulative arrival uh, process aij is assumed to be ij within each time period and the, the, the lambda being the arrival rate vector. The control or decision process D of T is the cumulative allocation to each basic schedule. And the dynamics of the queuing system consists of the difference between the arrival and the control processes. And the adjacency matrix A provides the relationship between the schedule and the queues. Turning to the fluid model, we scale the space and the time by an integer r 
by our assumptions and the functional law of large numbers, we, we have the tightness of the scale of the queuing process, the arrival and the decision processes. Thus guarantee the existence of the convergence uh, subsequences for bounded sequences. The convergence subsequence QR of T approach a deterministic uh, process Q of T and its uh, dynamics is governed by a given system of differential equations. Sigma of T is uh, the control process and it consists of convex combination of basic schedules reflecting that the stochastic schedule policy can be random. We're now ready to present our control formulation. For each uh, initial state Q0, we seek to determine a fluid level control policy that with the objective of minimizing the total weighted Q length uh, over the entire time horizon. And to ensure the finiteness of this value, the objective is discounted. And CIG here represent the cost associated with input port I and output port J. While similar problems have been studied in the literature, the large scheduling space and its complicated constraints and the relationships make this problem for the input queue switches uh, much more difficult. For example, one instance is equivalent to parallel queuing system, and we know that the CMU policy is optimal. But for our formulation in general, CMU may not even be stable. Meanwhile, uh, max weight policy is always stable. So uh, as a specific example, here we have a three by three switch where the CMU policy is actually not stable. Given the specific costs and the arrival rates for Q11, 12, 21, and 23, the CMU rule will concentrate on scheduling the ones with higher costs, but this will cause Q11 uh, to blow up. One of the reasons that the CMU policy cannot be optimal in general is that because uh, it actually does not always maximize the weighted outflow as it did in the uh, single server multi-class queuing system. So to achieve that, the optimum policy for the fluid model needs to find a combination of basic schedules that always produce a maximum flow subject to the system constraints as shown here. Especially important is one of the uh, constraints, namely the L1 norm of the schedules uh, sigma. Uh, this is constraint is promoted to the objective with a multiplier tau. And the multiplier tau that ensure the constraint is tight would then be called critical threshold, in which case we have a work conserving system. Then we have our first result is that there always exists such a critical threshold. In fact, the proof is a, a constructive one, which we designed a set of search algorithms. First, search among all the possible weights of basic uh, schedules then search across the space in between. And we show that the algorithm terminates in finite step number of steps. And uh, we also provide complexity analysis. This notion of critical threshold then leads to our uh, scheduling algorithms for the fluid uh, optimal control problem. Namely, for each initial state, the optimal uh, control algorithm will just be following the scheduling decisions according to iteratively solving the critical threshold as defined more precisely in algorithm four, which make use of algorithm one, two, three to get 
the critical threshold. When all the Q lenses are strictly positive, the policy actually coincides with the CMU rule. This is consistent with the two by two optimal results previously mentioned. But that is otherwise not always true. Going back to the three by three example, when Q12 and Q21 is zero, are zero, Q11 and the Q23 are positive, the critical threshold is actually zero and the optimal policy is highlighted in red, which is definitely different from CMU. So for our scheduling uh, algorithm, we have the following two results. The first one is saying that uh, when the arrival rate vector is inside the interior of the polytope of all the feasible arrival rates, our algorithm can actually empty the fluid system in finite time. That's, that is the stability or throughput optimality of our control algorithm at, at fluid level. The second theorem confirms that our control algorithm indeed produce an optimal solution. That is the optimality of our result. For the first theorem, the main idea is actually based on Carothero-Dory theorem that gives convex combination representation of points in the polytope, especially the interior points. Then compare that to the critical threshold, which has the L1 constraint tight. One can easily see that the uh, weighted Q lens will decrease strictly for those interior points. Thus, the weighted Q lens can be used as a Lyapunov function to ensure the system will be empty in finite time. For the second theorem, the proof is reduced to verification of necessary and sufficient condition of the Pontryagin maximum principle. In doing so, we basically need to construct uh, functions, uh, processes associated with both Hamiltonian and Lagrangian function. In particular, we need to construct the process eta of t and the p of t here. E of t will essentially be the optimal allocation and the p of t will then be solved uh, by the, uh, the ODE at bullet the second bullet point. Although our main contribution are theoretical, now briefly uh, compare the optimal control policy with the CMU and the max weight policy numerically. We fix the throughput to be kappa and randomly generate arrival rate costs and constraints. And also randomly generate initial Q lens uniformly between one and a hundred. In this representative example, we compare the performance over time of the optimal policy against max weight for kappa equal to 0 0.7, 0 0.9, and 0.95. We see the differences of the performance is significant. And the relative ga gaps are uh, 1935 and 50% respectively. Next, we fixed uh, kappa equal to nine, uh, 0.9 and compare the performance of the optimum policy against both max weight and the CMU. In the first case, CMU coincides with the optimal uh, algorithm. And the second case, CMU is unstable. Third one, CMU is stable, uh, but suboptimal. In all cases, uh, the differences in performance are significant for both algorithms. To conclude, we derive uh, optimal policies for the fluid model of input Q switches under general linear uh, cost function. The results are of interest beyond the input Q switches to general networks uh, with General to stochastic networks with general constraints. And then we're definitely interested in how to carry over the insights and ideas in this study to the original stochastic system.
thank you.